Harvested grains must be dried before they can be stored. Otherwise, they'll spoil. Farmers can outsource this work to someone else for a hefty fee. Or they can choose to keep everything on the farm by investing in a grain dryer. To use a grain dryer, the farmer simply dumps their harvest into a fold-down loading hopper. Once the bin is full, he or she starts the dryer's power unit. A central auger circulates the grain inside the bin as a fan blows in hot air drying the grain. Most of the grain dryer's components are made out of steel tubing. Workers cut the tubes to the various required lengths. Once all the pieces are cut, workers position them on an assembly jig. Here, they're assembling the dryer's mainframe. Once all the parts are laid out, workers lock the pieces in place and weld them together. They assemble what's called the spider on a different assembly jig. The spider supports the dryer's plenum chamber, the component at the center of the bin that distributes the hot air. Workers bolt the spider to the mainframe and move the unit to the paint area. They clean and prime the steel, then coat it with corrosion-resistant paint. It takes 24 to 32 hours for the paint to dry. At that point, workers mount the agitator to the spider. The agitator prevents wet grain from sticking to the bin wall. They mount the agitator's main drive chain to the main gear and gearbox drive. Meanwhile, a plasma torch cuts sheets of perforated galvanized steel for the bin. These pieces will form the circular bottom. A press punches holes along the edges of each sheet. Workers connect the sheets together and bolt them onto a ring called the transition band at the top of the mainframe. Then they lower the spider and bolt it to the transition band. They bolt the plenum chamber to the spider. The chamber is made of perforated galvanized steel sheets. Hot air blown into the chamber by the power unit exits through the perforations drying the circulating grain. Next, they assemble the bin's outside wall. They bolt perforated galvanized steel sheets together as well as to the transition band on the main frame. The sheets enclose the plenum chamber at the center and vent the dry air through the perforations. Workers mount the power unit to the mainframe. The unit, consisting of a burner and fan, blows hot air into the plenum chamber. In another part of the factory, they build the loading hopper on an assembly jig. After welding the parts together, they clean, prime, and paint the steel. Install the auger that moves the grain. Then a cover the farmer can adjust to regulate the flow. He also adds a protective screen for safety. Then they attach the finished loading hopper to the dryer's mainframe. It connects via a pivoting hinge on the front of the loading tube. The hinge lets the farmer fold the hopper up and out of the way when it's not in use. Workers install springs to make it easier to lower and raise the 60-pound hopper. They also install a latch, which secures the hopper against the bin during storage or transport. The grain dryer rolls on wheels attached to axles bolted to the mainframe. The last step is installing a ladder on the outside of the bin. This provides access to the top of the grain dryer for monitoring operation and maintenance.